And today we're going to learn our Lapitzov's rule, which is very exciting because it helps us um, it helps us do limits um, without working. And you might have realized by now, limits are hard, so it's great to have um, a fantastic tool that works uh, for a lot of them. So what is Lapitzov's rule? So it's not it's not a hospital. I don't but I don't care. You you call it the hospital rule. Um it's named after a guy who didn't invent anything but had a lot of money and paid for paid other people to take credit for their stuff. Um so the moral of the story I think is be rich and good things will come to you when you pay for them. L'Hopital's rule. Um, so L'Hopital's rule tells you how to find a limit um, tells you how to find a limit of a quotient. Um, so um, if we have two functions, so we're going to find the limit of f divided by g r if they're both differentiable um, on an interval containing a number but Possibly, they, they might not even be defined at the number because we're trying to do a limit. So we don't care what happens at the, at the point. Um, and then one of two things has to happen, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, if the limit, of both of them is zero or the the limit of both of them is infinity then what happens is that the limit as x approaches um, the, the limit of the quotient is the same as the limit of um, the quotient of the derivatives. And derivatives are often simpler, uh, so this makes life easier. Um, so this is, of course, um, I can only say things are equal. Um, only this limit exists. Otherwise, what do I mean? Um, but if the if the limit of the derivatives divided together exists, then the original limit exists. Um, And I guess the, 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 the denominator can be zero a bunch of times. Otherwise, I can't even compute the limit. Um, so this is L'Hopital's rule. If you, if you see a quotient, um, if you see a quotient and you want to take the limit, and so here's where, you, where it's easy to mess up. Only, only if you have zero divided by zero, or infinity divided by infinity, you can actually take derivatives in the top and the bottom. And, and then try to take the limit again. And one nice feature of this is that you can, you can repeat this as many times as you want until the derivatives are simple enough or until you get very bored. 
So maybe you take one derivative, it doesn't work, but then you can apply, if you still get zero divided by zero, you can still, you can apply L'Hopital's rule again. Um, and also, uh, it works the same if instead of taking the limit at zero, I take the limit at infinity. But um, the most important thing to keep in mind is that the limit has to be zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Otherwise we're in for pain. <clears throat> okay, um, so, so that's all right. Um, now to do some examples and then we'll be done. Are there any questions? All right, well, um, well, so let's do. The limit well, it doesn't matter. The limit of the logarithm of x divided by x minus one. So this is a limit um, that I wouldn't know how to do. Well, how would I do this limit if I didn't have L'Hopital's rule? I would probably try to take the exponential of it, but it doesn't. I have no idea how I would do this without L'Hopital's rule. <clears throat> so, um, what happens to this limit when I try to plug in x equals one? Uh, well, I get the logarithm of one, which is. Well, the logarithm of one is the number. It's zero. There, there you go. Thank you, Pascal. Uh, so the numerator goes to zero. The denominator goes to zero. So this is zero divided by zero. So um, so I can try to apply L'Hopital rule. Um, so that means that I can uh, take the derivative of the top and the bottom and not apply the quotient rule, which would be, well, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't do anything for me. Uh, it wouldn't tell me anything about the limit, but also um, it would be more complicated. So I have to take the derivative of logarithm, which is very easy because I just have a for, uh, formula for the answer and the derivative of derivative of x minus one. The derivative of logarithm is just one over x. And the derivative of uh, x minus one is one minus zero because of the power rule. So um, so this, if, if this exists, it equals the limit of one of one over x. And this is a continuous function of one. So this limit is one. And that's it. That seemed a little too easy. Uh, well, uh, what can I tell you? It's your lucky day. Wait, so like you use like the derivative to help you find the limit? Say it again? Wait, so like you, like 
it's like in order to like did you do this in order to like find the limit of it or like yeah i was trying to this is what i'm trying to find right i'm trying to find the limit of this uh of this fraction so like using this rule is just like a another way we could go about finding a limit of like particular types of limits uh yeah well sometimes the only way like i don't know another way of doing this limit um yeah so from now on you can use this to find limits <clears throat> limits that you and some limits that you already knew how to do you can also use Lobital's rule for and it might be easier it might not be but it's just there for you to use for example the limit let's actually put just infinity of x squared minus 3 divided by x squared plus x plus 1. So this limit is infinity divided by infinity. So um, see this polynomial to approach infinity. So I can, the problem, the problem is that this is, you know why it's too easy to use because you start using it and, and you start just you go a little crazy, you start using it every time. Every time you see a fraction, well, if you do it when it's not a fraction, then that's definitely not going to work because it only works for fractions. But um, you start using it blindly and you stop checking that the limit is infinity divided by infinity or zero divided by zero. And then if, if, if it's not one of these, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's just not going to work. You're going to get a wrong answer. Um, but in this case, um, this is infinity by infinity, so it's definitely going to work. So I can take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So, um, so of course, this is a limit that you knew how to do already. And you know that the answer, you know, you look at it and you know that the answer is going to be one because the leading coefficient is x, the leading term is x squared in both of them, which has leading coefficient one. Uh, but uh, we can also show this using L'Hopital's rule and never divide it. Well, sometimes there's no other way to do it but dividing a fraction by the numerator and denominator. But this is. Um, it's time when it works. Okay, so um, this is the derivative divided by the derivative. And what is this limit? Well, it's infinity divided by infinity. I still don't know whether it exists or not. Um, but the thing is, is, since it's infinity divided by infinity, I can just use L'Hopital again. And I can take yet another derivative. Um, and I'm going to get, you can see I'm going to get one. <clears throat> so, um, so, this limit existing tells me by L'Hopital through that this limit exists and it's the same. Uh, it's one. And this limit existing and being one tells me that this limit exists and it's one. Um, and that's it, I'm done. So this works especially well when there are polynomials involved because polynomials get, uh, you're guaranteed to get an easier answer as you take derivatives. Uh, because if you have a polynomial degree 
six, that means that after taking six derivatives, you know you're going to have just a number. Um, so eventually it's going to be pretty much guaranteed it's going to be easy enough. Um, Okay, uh, maybe one more. The limit of sex approaches zero. Um, this is the one from the book. Tangent minus sex divided by x cubed. Like, I believe we know how to do do we know how to do this? I, 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 I don't know. It'll take a while to think about it. But since we know that sine of x over x approaches 1, which well, you really do by the Um you could, um, maybe you could figure this out, but it would be pretty hard. But with L'Hopital's rule, though, so what kind of limit is this? What does the numerator approach? Is the tangent of zero. Wait, is that like negative limit or is it just like? Oh, no. That was just uh... Although we could compute the negative limit, of course. Is that x cubed? Yeah. So sine of zero divided by cosine of zero. Uh, what's that? The numerator is zero. Uh, and since the squares had to one, thank you, Sydney. Since, since the squares had to one, the denominator is not gonna be zero. Cosine of zero is one. Um, so tangent of zero is zero. So this limit is zero minus zero divided by zero, which means I can use L'Hopital's uh, so would I take points for if you, if you do a limit with L'Hopital's rule and you don't write anywhere that this is zero divided by zero? Yes, for sure. Um, like, yeah. <clears throat> because otherwise you don't know that it works. So since this is zero divided by zero, I can, I can take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. And I don't know what is gonna happen to the uh, numerator, but the denominator is gonna get easier, so I'm hopeful. So what is the derivative of tangent? Uh, isn't it secant squared? All right, thank you, Pascal. It is secant squared. If you don't remember, you can always use the quotient rule. <clears throat> but it's a bit too long for not memorizing this one. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of x is 1. Um, derivative of, three, uh, of x cubed is 3x squared. So, um, well, now we could rearrange this. Um, well, I guess, can I compute this limit? The denominator is zero and the numerator, uh, well, secant squared is one over cosine and cosine of zero is one. So this is still zero divided by zero. Uh, so I don't know, I don't know what the limit is yet. 
there's limited chosen, so that you have to do it a bunch of times. Um, so now one thing we could do is to rearrange things. Like we, I could multiply a numerator and denominator by cosine squared, but I don't want to do that because um, I don't want to do that because the denominator is very simple, and I don't want to multiply by cosine squared and ruin that. So um, this is still zero divided by zero. So we're going to use Orbital's rule again. So we're going to take the limit uh, of the derivative. divided together. And at this point, um, unless anyone knows a formula for the derivative of sigma squared, which you shouldn't, we're going to have to um, figure it out. But that's fine. Taking a derivative is pretty much always easier than taking the limit. So, uh, so how do I, how can I do the derivative? More than one answer for sure. Well, I mean, it's like one over sine squared. One over cosine squared. And now what do I do? The quotient rule. The quotient rule. Um, yeah. If you knew the derivative of secant in your head, which not the most important derivative, um, you could you could do it by the chain rule, but either way you should get the same answer. So the quotient rule, the quotient rule is pretty doable when the numerator is a constant because um, the first term vanishes. There's cosine squared x times the derivative of one, which is zero. And then we have negative one times the derivative of the numerator. So I need to take the derivative of cosine squared. So the denominator is cosine to the fourth. And how do I take the derivative of the square of the cosine? Do you have to use the chain rule? I think so. Uh, so this is a function where you do the you put the cosine in the inside and then you square it. I mean, cosine squared. This is this. We write this because we don't like writing writing brackets, but it means put the cosine inside of the square. So so yes, I mean we have to use the chain rule. Thank you very much. Uh, so we got a so this minus sign is from before. And then we got to take the derivative of the square applied to the cosine. So this is the derivative of the outside applied to the inside, which is cosine, times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So now, um, there's two minus signs that cancel. There's a cosine. And there's cosines on the top and bottom. So this is two sine x cosine to the third of x. Um, OK, so where we were. Um, is that we have to take the derivative of the cosine of the, the 
or the derivative of the top and the bottom. And I just took the complicated derivative and I got um, two sine x divided by uh, divided by cosine cubed x minus zero. Oh, I forgot to write the limit for the limit of x approaches zero. And then the derivative of the denominator is six x. Okay, I should now I should really simplify this into one fraction. So this becomes um, so the two. And the, the two and the six become a three. Okay. Um, so, so what happens to this limit? So I have sine of zero is zero in the numerator and x is zero. But the thing is, is the limit of sine of x over x, I know what it is. Um, it's um, it's one. And then the, the cosine of zero is just gonna be one. So I can tell you this limit is gonna be, is gonna be even though it's zero divided by zero, I, and we could use L'Hopital's rule yet again. Although I don't want to now because there's a product rule on the bottom. Um, I mean, you could do it. It wouldn't be, wouldn't even be that bad. Um, what we could do is split it, use a, the limit law and split it into the parts that are not gonna affect anything and the part that is. So um, this approach is one third. <clears throat> so if I find the limit of the other factor, then, then I'm gonna be done. Uh, Does that say cosine squared? Yeah. Where did that come from? Oh, it should be cubed. Ooh, thank you. Um, Cosine cubed. Okay, um, the limit of cosine cubed is the limit of, it's just one cubed. Um, so if I look at this limit, what I want to do is take the, the stuff that doesn't bother me at all, the stuff that doesn't have any zeros and split it and separate it from the stuff that may or may not have a limit. And when I do that, I'm left with only sine of x over x. Um, so L'Hopital's rule is best used with, um, where you stop and think, because if you start taking derivatives blindly, you can make your life kind of complicated. Uh, so the limit of sine of x over x is just the limit I know. Um, it's one we we've been using it for over a month now. Uh, if you want to know a way to remember it, L'Hopital a law is a way to remember it. This is the same as the limit of cosine divided by one. Um, so uh, at this point, we're done. The limit is one third. So that means that all the previous limits were one third, and they all exist. Okay, so, I mean, this was a problem that was, it was 
made uh, to make you <laughs> to make you take three steps. Um, probably if you pick some random functions, odds are you're not gonna need to take three steps. Uh, Unless, of course, they're handpicked to give you a challenge like this one is. <clears throat> Are there any questions? We just allow to separate the x from the 3x. Well, the thing is, I have a. Um, let me write in the next page. How are you just allowed to separate the x from the 3x? Um, I have sine of x divided by uh, 3x cosine cubed of x. This is a product of fractions in whatever way I want it to be. Because you multiply fractions by multiplying numerator and denominator together. So I could split it. Uh, however, it's convenient to me. For example, like this, with an X here, or with an X in the other side. All of these are the same uh, because when you multiply two fractions, you multiply numerator and denominator, or you could even you could split it into three. Um, but what I what I did um, was split it into stuff that approaches zero, that, that doesn't approach zero, and stuff that does. And then the the limit laws tell you if you if you find the limit of two things, the limit of the product is the product of the limits. Does that make sense? All right. Okay. Uh, more examples then. So, L'Hopital's rule you can use for things that are not quotients, that are not fractions, as long as you manipulate them into a into a fraction. And turns out most things you can manipulate into a, being a fraction. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm writing. Where's the French hat? There it is. So one easy thing to turn into a fraction is a product. So for example, this limit. So when are products complicated? They're complicated, well, if they're zero times zero, then they're zero. And if they're infinity times infinity, then they're infinity. But if they're zero times infinity, then, uh, then who knows? Okay, so this is the limit of a product, um, and I guess you can only take the logarithm of positive numbers. So um, x approaches zero, of course, and the logarithm as we approach zero, it has a vertical asymptote. It, it approaches negative infinity. 
So I have no clue what this limit is. So what you definitely cannot do is take the derivative of x and the logarithm and multiply them together. That's just not how things work. But what you can do is write this into a fraction. Um, so how do I write this into a fraction? I can think of two ways. I guess you could do like ln of x over x to the negative one. Yeah. So um, what Dustin said, if you uh, multiplying is the same thing as dividing by the inverse. So these two are, are the same. Uh, not, or we could just, we could go x divided by ln of x to the negative one. I guess I guess we could also go the whole thing divided by one, but that wouldn't I wouldn't get much from it because that wouldn't be that wouldn't be zero divided by zero or something like that. So um, both of these work, uh, but I like this one better uh, because I'd rather take the the derivative of the top and bottom here are much easier than the derivative. Well, derivative of one over log is um, well, it's just that the other two are way easier. So this limit now, uh, well, I'm still not gonna know what it is, but now it's negative infinity divided by positive infinity. So it's infinity by uh, divided by infinity, so I can use what it tells. So, uh, so what do I do? I just take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. I take the derivative of the logarithm and I take the derivative of x to the negative one. And those are both pretty easy. Uh, the logarithm becomes one over x when I take the derivative and the power rule says you get negative x to the, so negative one to the, and then x to the negative two. So this is again infinity divided by infinity. And I could use L'Hopital's rule, it just wouldn't make it easier. What do I do here? Uh, I, I simplify, I multiply the numerator and denominator by x. And this becomes uh, x to the zero divided by negative x to the negative one when you multiply powers of x, the exponents add. And one divided by x to the negative one, now we're gonna do what we just did. And this is gonna be just negative x. And this time it is just zero. So, um, so that's it, this limit is zero. Um, when you multiply x and log x, log x wants to be very big and x wants to be very small. And turns out that, that x wins, uh, the logarithm of x becomes infinite very, very slowly. Um, I'm, I'm confused. How did you, okay, it's like, how did you go from x to negative one to, what is that, the x to the three times? To the one. How did, how did you get that? I, I multiplied the numerator and denominator by the same thing. Um, so I had, x to the negative one. And what I did was, um, well, I mean, a lot of things you could do. You could also, you could write this as negative and then subtract the exponents and you would get negative x to the one. 
you, what I did was multiply and divide by x. So you would have one in the numerator and in the denominator, I would have x to the negative x, negative two plus one, which is x to the positive one. Okay. Any other questions? So I think, I mean, uh, how's log of x? Uh, well, um, Oh, is the logarithm? It's not x, it's x inverse. Uh, but I assume that's what you mean. Uh, the logarithm has a has an asymptote. And x inverse has an asymptote. If you take the logarithm, this is what it looks like. It approaches negative infinity. Um, if you take x inverse, it approaches positive infinity. So if you divide those two, you get um, infinity divided by infinity. Negative. Well, one of them is negative, but that doesn't matter. I can put a minus sign in front. Are you asking about the numerator or the denominator? Uh, I mean, I, when I started, I knew I had zero times infinity. And I know if I turn that into a fraction, either, you know, if you put the zero in the denominator, it's going to turn into one over infinity. And if you go the other way, you put the infinity in the denominator, it's going to turn into a zero. Um, so I could have guessed based, based on this, if you start with zero times infinity, when you turn that into a fraction doing what we just did, you can, so, if you have a quotient, uh, sorry, no, if you, have, if you have, if you have zero times infinity, when you make that into a fraction, like this or like that, that's always gonna become either zero divided by zero or infinity divided by infinity. So I could, have told, uh, I could have told you from the beginning that this was, that I was gonna be able to use L'Hopital's rule. When you have zero times infinity, you can always use L'Hopital's rule in this way. Does that make sense? Right, so, uh, I guess I have two more. So another thing, another limit that is complicated, but we can try to use L'Hopital's rule for is um, fractions or uh, fractions uh, differences. When you when you take infinity minus infinity, um, well, that um, that is a limit that you never know. You never know which one is going to win. You never know if it's going to be infinity or negative infinity, or it's not going to exist, or it's going to be some number in between. Um, but you can, if you can figure out how to change these into a fraction, you can use the Pitel's rule as well. So, for example, for this limit. Um, so the denominator here approaches zero. Uh, well, on both of them, both of the denominators approach zero, just like the first example we did. 
Um, so this is infinity minus infinity. So in principle, there's no way of knowing. Um, I mean, in principle, just by doing this, I don't know what the answer is. Could be anything or it could not exist. And I can't just take, again, L'Hopital's rule only works for fractions. I can't take the derivative of both of those and subtract them. Um, that's not, that's just not gonna give me the answer. So what I can try to do is try to turn these into a single fraction and then apply L'Hopital's rule to that fraction. So um, how do I turn two fractions that are added together or subtracted together into one? Well, what you can do is pick a common denominator. Common denominator. Thank you, Zachary. Uh, so the common denominator is going to have to be the product of both denominators. So. I have to multiply the the first fraction in the top and the bottom by log of x and the second one by x minus one in order to have the same denominator. And once you have two fractions with the same denominator, you can subtract them by subtracting the numerators because uh, three halves of the cake minus two halves of the cake equals one half of the cake. Um, on the other hand, one half minus one third is you know, harder to do in my head. So um, this is how you add fractions. And now if we're lucky, I can use L'Hopital's rule here. So, um, well, X minus one goes to zero and log also goes to zero. So the denominator is zero and the numerator is zero as well. This is zero divided by zero. So logarithms tend to make me hopeful because um, they tend to become simpler when I take derivatives. So I'm gonna take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So the derivative of the logarithm is one over X. The derivative of X is just one. Well, that looks simple. And now, uh, well, there's a product there. <clears throat> I need to use the product rule. This is gonna be the first times the derivative of the second minus um, the derivative of the first times the second. Oh, and I'm gonna, now there's no, wait a minute, no. I just did this wrong. Derivative of the first times the second, so logarithm of x. <clears throat> so the numerator, Okay, they still both look like uh, one, uh, like zero. Uh, so what I should do, um, so, this is, um, well, the numerator is zero. This is zero and this is zero. So I should try to do it again. Uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna have time, but that's fine. Some plenty of examples. Uh, so what I should do is multiply the top and bottom by X to get rid of that annoying denominator.
and you swap it down again, and then it's going to work. Okay. Um, but I, I'm, I am out of time. So tomorrow I'll do the last Habitat example and I'll be done. And, and right now I'm going to serve my office.